Hey guys, welcome back. So again, I'm counting down on the my top five cameras for 2006. As I meant, as I've been mentioning, uh, I have a link below to do my article on my blog where I list my favorite cameras for 2016, the cameras I already own. Uh, right now, I'm on number four. If you want to click somewhere around here and you will be able to see number five. Um, today, number four, it's going to be, if you read the article, already noticed the Canon EOS 5 an analog camera. So let me get it. So this is, I'm not going to be overly technical about the camera, you already know this. So I'm going to link below to the usual website where you can check the camera manual on the PDF uh, version of it. So you can just check all the technical details and the geeky stuff. I'm just going to talk about how I, why I like it, how I use it and when I use it and all of that stuff, some, some sample images, etc. So this is an EOS camera, so this is a, classic, a, class, a very classical design. Um, I got mine fairly cheap, so I got mine by 100 for 100 euros. Uh, I'm usually very patient when I want to buy a camera. I didn't go out and buy it for, from a price I don't think it's a fair price, so I got it for 100 euros and included, and the, the camera we buy for 100 euros included the, the lens. Not this one, this is the Plastic Fantastic 1.8, but the, the actual one I'm filming with it right now. I actually prefer that one to this one, and that one it's the also the 50mm 1.8, however, the Mark 1 version, the one with the metal mount. So this is the 8.1 50mm Mark 1. I really it's uh, one of my go-to lenses for film and digital and I've been filming most of my videos with it and it's been great. So here I have, have the 1.8 plastic one. It's still an excellent lens and for the price 80 euros, you can really, cannot really go, go wrong with it. I have uh, three plastic ones and the Mark I. I can't get enough of them. So they, they last long if you are careful with, it, with them and they're just great for the price. So. As you can see, the EOS 5, it's a classical uh, EOS design. I got mine with the data back. I don't, really, I don't think it's standard. Um, but well, it's a nice bonus to have. So I have here the classical dial um, for the EOS cameras. We have here the drive button. We have here the AF mode button. We have here the metering button. And we have here the ISO button and, uh, and the bracketing and the also the eye focus. So this camera features the eye focus which means you have um, in this case not that many focus points uh, but you have five focus points and they are horizontal. They're not that much that many but they're more than enough for me at least and it features the eye focus which means um, if you look you, you, the camera after being calibrated so we have here a button to calibrate your camera through your eye. I'll show you a video of the close-up later on. Um, you can calibrate the camera for your eyes, and, or for your eye in this case, and you can look at the focus point, half press, and it will focus to the point you are looking at. It's an interesting feature, uh, however to me uh, it quickly wore out, so I had a little fun with it for five minutes and it doesn't work all that great. Uh, it works, uh, but only works horizontally. So if you want to shoot vertically, it does not work. And I really prefer the classical press here to select your focus point and just hand select it. I just prefer it that way. It's just me. It features here the, the dial button. It's famous to fail. So mine has been great ever since I bought it. Uh, so no worries for me for this for now. It, it, uh, it's, it's famous to fill, so I think it just spins freely. Um, but mine is working fine. You press here and you can turn the, your dial to the preferred option. So it has here an L, a red L, which means lock, and it's powered off. Then it has the P, the TV, the AV, the manual, 
the Apple Field Preview, Flash Sync options, and the Fully Automatic, the Portrait, the Landscape, the Micro, and the, the, running, the, the famous Running Guy for Sports, for your automatic mode. I don't really use the auto modes that much, but it's nice to have them there if I really need someday, but I don't think I will. So I usually go, go around to the PTV VNM, so that's where I live, um, and it's been great. It has a, a top LCD screen for your, um, so can you actually see your settings. It has a pop-up flash and it's, it zooms and it's TTL enabled. And basic, that, that's a basic, uh, basically it. Um, oh, sure, it has the top button, the top dial and the back dial. So really classic EOS design that's still um, current on digital cameras. Let me just power it on. So it has a very distinct noise of, of the shutter. So I'll just put it on the, I don't know, manual. And then you cannot see it on the video right now. I'll show it in a separate footage. You have here the speed, the aperture, ISO, if you want it to beep or not, metering modes, the drive mode, and the exposure compensation uh, values. So I'm just going to take a shot for you guys to, to, to listen to the shutter. Let me see. So nice and smooth, mine works great. Let me just... So the focus isn't perfect as you saw, it's hunted a little bit. It's not the best focusing camera I own, but it works just fine. It's, it's okay. So have the five focus points. You can, can manually select your focus points or can use the uh, eye to focus detection feature if you if you want to. Uh, in terms of uh, its uh, film chamber, you just pop it here on the side. It will just and it will open and then you can actually see the. Let me see if I can actually make this work. Yeah, okay, the film chamber and as the shutter. Let me just fire a couple of shots. Okay. So the, the, the speed, so let me see, it can go from bulb, 30 seconds, all the way to 1 800, 8 thousandths of a second. So pretty sweet, um, it's nice and sturdy, it's heavy, uh, it can also has an optional grip if you wish, but I'm not a very fan of grips, it just makes the cameras too big, at least for my liking. And of course, it takes a battery. Uh, it's not that hard to find this battery, so I'm just going to open this. So just it has here a little knob. You just pull it out, twist it. This will pop. Okay, and then you will expose um, the battery. Uh, it's a two CR5 battery. Um, two CR5. It's still very standard. I don't find any problems finding these either on uh, actual um, stores, physical stores, on or eBay's or equivalent. So just it's fine. It lasts a long time. So at least for two rolls, I suspect. Um, at least. So it's not a really issue. Hmm. Yeah, great. Uh, I love it. It's kind of bulky. It's big. So. But I enjoy big cameras. Uh, I don't have that large of a hand. It's quite large, but not that much. Uh, and I like the feel of the grip. So if I if I use a small camera, it's nice to have it on your pocket. But I like to handhold this. I like I want, I'm on the, one of those uh, one hand shooters, and this really enables me to do exactly do that. Uh, it and uh, it. It has the famous fun custom functions that Canon uh, uses on its most EOS cameras still today. Uh, it's kind of cumbersome, so you need to, to, to know which fu what which function does. So function one will uh, load the, the film, will pre-roll the film. Function two will enable or disable the flash or something like that. So you need to know which function, what it does, each one. You need to go to the manual. It's kind of a pain. Uh, well, well, just set it once and you're done, I think, I guess. I don't know. It's just something you have to live with. Let me just pop the flash open. As you can see, it has a um, 
pretty mighty flash. And uh, let me just fire a shot. So probably you didn't see it, let me see it right again. Yeah, it's kind of hard to see in, in video. Uh, but it's firing, it's uh, pretty large for a pop-up flash and I like its position. Um, I, it's not, it's not too nice to have it for some field flash or something like that. But I, I prefer to use the regular um, hot shoe flashes for something more serious. But it's, it's good to have if you really need something in a pinch and it will make it work for you. As a side note, as you can see here in my strap, a little gadget I made. So it's just a standard film canister with some zip ties. And I can have here, I don't, it's empty right now, but I can have here a spare film. So I, I don't, if I'm just going out and about and taking some shots, I don't need to carry a, um, a purse or something like that with me. If I just want to take my camera, I just put my home keys in my pocket, some money in my pocket. I already have a preloaded film and an extra film and just, I'm done. I can spend a couple hours in the streets having some, having some fun, shooting some shots with uh, my film cameras and I just uh, have an extra one right, right over here. So that's it for now. Check the links below for my article on my blog and for more technical details and the actual camera manual. And I'll see you next time.